If you played the tutorial before, there's this part where you're a tiger and you have to shake the mouse around to deal damage. The learn tab in the main menu also tells you to shake your mouse around faster for more damage. I mean, that should be all there is to shark damage, right? Right? <laughs> WRONG! Welcome back to Sharking 101, with shark damage being the topic of the day. Because even basic concepts can have more to them than you might think. Thrashing is, with a few exceptions, the primary method of dealing damage for the sharks. It goes without saying that this one is one of the first mechanics you need to get a grip on when learning to play. There's a sweet spot in the middle for good thrashing. You don't want to thrash too softly or too harshly. Thrashing too softly means you're not killing the divers as fast as possible. Also, it's depressing to watch. Thrashing too harshly has a couple of issues, too. Firstly, thrashing does have a cap. At some point, thrashing any faster doesn't do any more extra damage. There's no difference in kill time between someone thrashing regularly and a baboon on steroids. Secondly, thrashing too hard causes disorientation. A big part of successful entries and exits in your attacks is efficiently getting from one point to the other in the least amount of time possible. And how would that be possible if you don't even know where you're looking at? A good hit-and-run attack consists of not only a plan to get in and score your kill, but also a plan to get out. If you disorient yourself, you have to take time to figure out where you want to go, and then take the time to aim. This is a very inefficient method of attack and often gets you killed. No, you need to assign your exit before going in. In this clip, I choose to go for this diver and then exit this way. Once I grab the diver, I turn around to face my exit, and then continue thrashing. Immediate lunge following my kill. No time wasted thinking, no time wasted aiming, smooth as butter. But some might be hesitant to do this because if they turn around then they're not damaging the diver since turning around isn't thrashing. This is not true. Simply put, any change in the direction you're facing with a diver in your jaws counts as thrashing. Are you looking left and right real fast? That deals damage. Up and down? That deals damage. Did you want to look to that guy? That deals damage. Do you have a 180 degrees turn bind? That does damage. Did you go AFK to get a drink and you accidentally bumped your desk which shifted your mouse in some random direction? That deals damage too. Turning around is still dealing damage to the diver, so you don't need to be worried about slow kill times. You just need to be quick in turning around, which comes with practice and developing your muscle memory. It would also be beneficial for you to adopt a thrashing pattern instead of giving your poor shark cross-eyed vision. The three I would recommend are left and right, up and down, and circles. The reason you should pick one of those three is because they help keep the camera focused on what you're aiming for next. Just take a look. I'm thrashing left and right here, and throughout all that, the exit I'm aiming for is generally remaining at the center of my screen. My thrashing is not interfering with my aim because the movements are negating each other from moving the camera too far. I personally prefer left and right thrashing, but the other two are just as good. One might also have a bad habit of not thrashing until they fully process that, oh, I grabbed someone, and then they start thrashing. This can extend your time to kill someone by half a second or a second, which doesn't sound like a lot, but depth has a pretty rapid pace, and you'd be surprised how much of a difference half a second can make. Once you've learned to thrash properly, I recommend you learn when to start thrashing for maximum damage. It takes some time and practice, but the best time to start thrashing is right before you grab someone. For example, in this clip right here, you can see that I start moving my mouse like I'm thrashing several frames before I've even grabbed the diver. That way, when I do grab the diver, I'm not missing out on any damage at all, and I'm guaranteeing the shortest possible kill time. With those couple of basics covered, it's time we proceed to the green STD. This is short for sexually transmitted disease. Now, STD. That's a completely different thing. It stands for standard thrash damage, and the reason it's called standard is because, as of this video's date, the majority of sharks have this level of thrash damage. More specifically, 7 out of the current 12 sharks possess standard thrash damage. Those sharks are Tiger, Lemon, Great White, Mako, Blue, Copper, and Goblin. All 7 of these sharks have an identical SKT. 
That stands for shortest kill time. The fastest a shark can kill a full health diver if they thrash from start to finish at their maximum damage. The SKT for these 7 sharks is 1.3 seconds, give or take 1 20th of a second in variance. Regular Bull and Big Eye Thresher both have an SKT of 1.7 seconds. Oceanic White Tip on defense mode clocks in at 2.15 seconds, and both Hammerhead and Thresher have an SKT of 2.66 seconds. These are their values assuming no abilities used, and they're just thrashing. But abilities is where this topic starts to get interesting. Lemon's ability provides a damage buff for what is typically the first lunge out of your cloak. Compared to the standard damage of other sharks, Lemon's SKT improves to 1.1 seconds at level 1 ability, 1.0 at level 2, and finally 0.8 at level 3. A whole half a second faster than that of the standard thrash damage. A bull at full rage possesses an SKT of 1.1 seconds. If it has rage between full and none, the SKT will range between 1.1 and 1.7 respectively. Thresher's tail lash can be applied while thrashing a diver in your jaws, your gaping maws, your northern orifice, the hideous shape of a hole we call your mouth. When applied along with your thrashing, your SKT will look to be 1.6 seconds at level 1, 1.4 at level 2, and 1.1 at level 3. In addition, Thresher also possesses a passive that lets it deal its thrash damage in an area around it, rather than just on the diver it has grabbed. So if, for instance, you were thrashing a diver and another was in your range for the whole duration, they would both die at the same time. Oceanic White Tip was a bit more interesting. Its SKT at level 1 attack mode is the same as every other shark with standard damage, sitting at 1.3 seconds. However, both level 2 and level 3 attack mode sat at 1.1 seconds. So, if you upgrade your ability as a White Tip purely for more damage, and the extra durability is irrelevant to you, you might as well stop at level 2. But enough about the small fry, let's talk about the big boys. If you ever want to get the speediest kills in the Pacific, look no further than Hammerhead. The passive ability is to slam divers on a hard surface to deal up to 75 damage per slam. For reference, a diver only has 100 health. The damage of a Hammerhead slam relies on two factors, angle and shark momentum. For the angle, you have to slam the diver at a 90 degrees angle from the surface you're pile driving them into. It doesn't have to be a perfect 90, mind you, it just needs to be close enough. For shark momentum, you'll want to use anything but basic movement because it's really not going to do it for you. Sprinting, lunging, and even darting, if timed correctly, will all yield maximum damage for your slams. You also want to avoid grabbing divers point blank, as that kills your momentum pretty quickly. Fun fact, contrary to what most people might think, you don't need to keep facing the wall to deal your slam damage. You can initiate your lunge, face away from the wall, and your slam damage will be unaffected. It will remain the same. This is very useful for when you want to look at your next target or exit. If you account for these two factors, angle and shark momentum, and perform well enough, you'll get maximum damage from your slams on a regular basis. Since the slam alone won't one-shot the diver, it's recommended you thrash the whole time you've got them grabbed to secure the kill. What's the SKT of that? The answer is 0.5 seconds, faster than every other shark we've mentioned thus far. And guess what? This isn't even Hammerhead's fastest method of killing. That's right, Hammerhead can perform a technique dubbed the double slam. And how does that work? So, there are some spots, such as this corner on Stash's third safe room, where the hammerhead can immediately follow up the initial slam with a consecutive second, along with thrashing in between. This leads to a kill so swift that the grab diver can't even muster a stab. Webwings, who mains hammerhead, showcases a few more examples of this maneuver in the following footage.
fastest this technique clocks in for a kill is 0.2 seconds, surpassing all the other sharks by a landslide. Despite all that, Hammerhead is technically the second in potential killing speed between the sharks. The number one spot for shortest possible killing times goes to Big Eye Thresher, because nothing beats actual one shots. Big Eye's knockback ability sends divers in front of it and even around it towards the direction it's facing, dealing varying damage once they hit a surface. The damage Big Eye's ability deals is based on two completely different factors from Hammerhead. Said factors are distance between the diver and the impacted surface, and a more interesting one being diver momentum. The closer a diver is to a surface, the more damage they will take. Distance alone makes up over half the diver's health and potential damage. If a diver is sitting still in the corner, with no movement whatsoever, the ability will deal approximately 57 damage to level 1, 67 at level 2, and 77 at level 3. As long as the diver sticks to a corner, a wall, or any other surface, Big Eye's ability is a guaranteed two-shot even at level 1. If the divers are moving, the damage increases by about 10 on all levels. Dashing gives divers a lot more momentum and makes your ability a lot more lethal, and the catch is that you as a big eye are trying to predict or read the divers' movements and habits to deduce when they will dash, and then subsequently match your ability's triggering with said dash. The closer the ability triggering is to the start of their dash, the better, as the start of the dash is where the diver is at the apex of their momentum. Although it is virtually impossible, you can one-shot a diver with your level 1 ability if the circumstances and your ability timing is perfect. Of course, upgrading your ability makes one-shotting dashing divers more feasible. DPVers are a lot more vulnerable because of their speed, and are significantly easier to insta-kill than dashing divers. The Big Eye's passive is creating a vortex in an area around itself when thrashing the diver. This vortex creates momentum for all divers in range towards the direction of the Big Eye Thresher, enough to send them flying through the shark and onto the other side or into a surface. Hitting the surface at enough speed will deal damage to the diver, although it's not as powerful as Big Eye's knockback ability. Of course, the rules of diver momentum still apply here, meaning divers moving, dashing, or DPVing into the big eye will accumulate more momentum and receive more damage upon hitting a surface. You will also find it more difficult to get damage this way because of how specific the circumstances need to be for it to work, but it is still a welcome bonus when it happens. Few things to note, distance between the big eye and the diver does not affect damage. It only determines whether your ability will hit them or not. Angle of impact also has no influence on damage either, unlike with Hammerhead. And the damage from Big Eye's knockback will vary anywhere between 0 and 100 based on diver momentum, distance between the diver and the surface, and also the Big Eye's ability level. Also beware, as a Big Eye, that while diver momentum can stack with your ability to deal more damage, it can also stack against your ability to limit your damage. If a diver is moving or dashing in a direction opposite to your knockback, you will end up dealing less damage. But back to the topic of thrashing, there's one more important value to talk about called the MHR, the minimum health requirement. A minimum amount of health that you need in order to not die just by the diver stabbing you. If your intention is to survive and heal after an attack, then you need to pay attention to your health as a shark, or you risk embarrassing deaths via stabbing. Stabbing is a minimized but guaranteed form of damage, while guns are a variable but lethally threatening method of damage. Just because stab damage is abysmal compared to gun damage does not mean you should forget about it. Sharks with standard thrash damage receive two stabs before killing a diver, assuming they are achieving their respective SKT. So let's say a Mako, for example. Two stabs, each stab dealing 15 damage, so 30 damage total. So you need a minimum of 31 health in order to live through a diver's stabs after thrashing them. A hammerhead that kills with thrashing only takes five stabs, each stab dealing 30 damage. That's 150 damage total, nearly half your health. So your MHR for that would be 151 health. Definitely showcases the importance of learning your slams. In comparison, thrashing with one perfect slam allows the diver to land one stab, 
30 damage, meaning your MHR is 31 HP. If you pull off a swift double slam as Hammerhead or an insta-kill as Big Eye, then you take no stab damage and, well, your MHR would be 1. Lemon at level 1 or 2 stock takes 2 stabs, meaning you take 34 damage and your MHR is 35. However, Lemon at level 3 stock, assuming you achieve the SKT of 0.8 seconds, takes a single stab. You take 17 damage, and your MHR now becomes 18. Thresher with its level 1 ability combined with Thrashing takes 3 stabs, equaling 45 damage in total and placing the MHR at 46. Once you have level 2 ability, the damage drops to 30, and the MHR drops to 31, since you now take 2 stabs before the kill. Of course, all these values are tabulated in a link in the description. Just take a good gander at them and give your health some more attention before deciding on healing or grabbing another diver. Also be mindful of the fact that the lower health you have, the riskier it is to go for another kill, even if you've already achieved the MHR necessary to survive the stab damage. Don't just charge in just because you've got enough HP to survive stabs. Do weigh the risks of going in with your current HP. Now if you want to practice thrashing, what's the ideal way to go about that? I would recommend you grab one of the 7 sharks with standard thrash damage, more specifically on Great White, because the shark's durability lets you live long enough to thrash to your heart's content, at least more than the others might allow. If you can regularly thrash as Great White, or any of the other 6 sharks for that matter, and kill the diver before the third stab occurs, and congratulations, you've passed thrashing school. But if you really want to perfect your thrashing, I recommend you play a Lemon. Recall how I said that Lemon at level 3 ability has an SKT of 0.8 seconds. Well, if you slack off at any point during your thrashing, even if it's a bit, your kill time drops to 1 second instead of 0.8, and with that, the stabs taken will also increase from 1 to 2. If you can thrash as Lemon with your level 3 stock and regularly manage to kill before the second stab, congratulations, you graduated thrashing school top of your class. That's about it for today's video, so go out there, learn your thrashing, and make the ocean a bit more red on this fine day.